We did a Hello World in the previous video, but I want to take it a little bit further. Let's make a multilingual Hello World. So, like, when you click on a different language, it will convert the text to Hello World in that language. Here's the file that we ended up with last time, right? It's a basic HTML file with some JavaScript in there that replaces what was in the HTML with some other text. So, here's the file here, right? If we go back and we look at the file again, you can see the scripting tags towards the bottom following the HTML that it replaces, right? So para para replace, replaces paragraph and hello world replaces header text. Now if we go into the head tag, we can add in some script, right? Last time we used a function part of the way through and then we replaced it. We're gonna go back in and we're gonna make another function because if we want to have something that like continually does the same thing like replaces text we can use a function to reuse code more efficiently we'll talk about it a couple different ways because the way that you're thinking of doing it is probably very logical but it's probably not the most efficient way unless you're pretty familiar with functions already alright so let's go ahead and give the function a name we called it call function before so we're just gonna call it the same thing for now we need the parentheses we need to open curly braces, then we need to close curly braces. Everything inside of the curly braces is what defines the function, right? This is what the function is going to do. Um, so we'll just go ahead. You know what? Instead of typing that, let's actually paste it in because that's what we're going to be doing, right? We're going to be using that same code, that same replacement tag. And I don't need the script tags down there at all. So it's We used buttons before. We can go ahead and use buttons again. So this button will call a function when it is clicked. And for right now, let's just call it click me like we did in the previous video. If we reopen this, let's make sure it actually works. So we click the button, there we go, it works just like before. Now let's change what this actually says to fit what we're doing now. So a uh, multilingual hello world. Actually, you know what? Why are we editing this in text edit? So let's use something a little better. Let's go ahead and open this in Atom. Uh, you can see the tabs here. I'm not going to really worry about the welcome tags right now. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, close them, I guess. And we can talk about some of the settings and stuff in Atom later. But uh, it does give you some nice documentation that you can check out at another point in time. So we'll go ahead and close that tab. And we'll go ahead and close this one as well. Just looking at it already, you can see it's quite a step up from text edit, right? So you can see in here all of this coloration, right? So this is syntax highlighting. And that coloration, as you get used to it, it is really helpful, right? So when something is colored wrong, it helps you kind of realize where there might be an error, right? So all that red shows that something's not quite right about it. Now it doesn't always work, so if I remove the semicolon, it doesn't detect an error right here, so it's not perfect, uh, but there are some useful aspects to it that help quite a bit more than text edit. And there are quite a few helpful things that we can add in later on in this program that we'll go over as we continue through the course. So let's modify this to that multilingual hello world that I had just mentioned, and we'll change this to say click a language below. So instead of it saying, click me, and instead of it being a button, let's actually make it just text. So I'm going to use span tags to separate the different text tags. And instead of click me, I'm going to have it be the name of that language. And I can highlight this, and I'll paste it in, add a line break, change the language. So maybe Portuguese. Uh, is that spelled right? Um, there is spell check in Adam. Now, how do we enable spell check? Let's go to help and type it in. There it is. Wait, where was it? All right, there it is. So packages, spell check, toggle. And there we go. Now we know that's correct. Paste in another one. Actually, let's have Japanese then Portuguese 
and uh, we'll grab one more and we'll put it above here so this one can be uh, maybe let's go with Arabic save and open there we go now we have the words down there each one is in a span and we can see that it replaces it now they are replaced the same way let's create a little bit of separation between them so some sort of indicator so I'll just use a couple random symbols to create some separation save refresh see what I think I'm alright with that I think that looks decent we need to actually make them different right so that each one does something different now there's different ways that we could do this we could create a function for each language and that probably seems the most logical thing to do right and that is a very logical thing to do but it's not necessarily the most efficient so what this might look like is Arabic English uh, Japanese but that's not the best way really we should have one function that is used for all of them so let's make all of these say change language I'll just copy and paste over the previous and then inside of the parentheses we can actually send through a parameter that will make it behave differently depending on which one we clicked on so maybe inside of here there's a string that says Arabic and maybe inside of the next one English and then Japanese and Portuguese and when they click on these words now it's gonna call that function still but it's gonna send a string there depending on which one they click and that string will then allow us to do different things depending on which one it's sent now there's different ways that we can do this too at this point the most like obvious to you would probably be using like an if else type situation so here we're gonna say if and then in parentheses language double equal sign so is equal to Arabic then open curly braces we'll put all of this inside of the curly braces curly braces are used a lot in JavaScript it's basically telling it how much to do right so everything in the curly braces is done if the if statement is true so we can try it alright so now if we click on it none of those do anything which is good and now we click on Arabic and it didn't do it let's figure out what I did wrong okay these should actually say span down here but that's not the issue I'll just go ahead and fix them since I'm noticing them now it worked before when they were still buttons or spans being closed by buttons which doesn't actually whatever the browser figures it out good browser let's go ahead and put a console.log in here to make sure it's actually running my function so we can use console.log as sort of a little um, check right so if we open the developer tools let's make this a little bigger so we know what we're doing alright there we go so we can see that it's not happy about something let's go back here ah okay so I opened that string with double quotes but I was using double quotes for the function name so let's go ahead and fix that so each of these strings should actually be enclosed in a single quote so that way we're not like closing the function name early on accident that's what happened there we go now if we refresh this and try again no error that's good English does nothing, Japanese does nothing, Portuguese does nothing, but you can see the console log still works and Arabic changes it, so perfect. In the inner HTML we'll change the first one to Arabic and then here we'll change this to Marhaban Balailam or Hello World in Arabic. And we can do another one, we can delete that console log, we can grab this code and we can paste it in we need four of them, right? One for each language. 
So after Arabic is English. That one's pretty easy, obviously, right? So English and then just Hello World. And then here we need Japanese. Which, um, we probably use Konnichiwa. Although Konnichiwa is actually good afternoon, it is commonly used for hello in general. And then Sekai. Lastly, Portuguese. Now for Portuguese, Hola Mundo, since that's like the direct translation. Alright, so if we do open with and we try it again, let's see if each one works. Portuguese works, Japanese works, English, Arabic, they all work. Now this still isn't very efficient. We may only have one function now, but we have so much in there with the if-then statements that it's not really any more efficient. So let's create an array. So to do this, we do var languages, so that creates a variable. We're going to use the square brackets, which tells it it's going to be an array. So we don't need all of these if then statements anymore. Inside of this array variable that we're creating, we're going to have a collection of strings. So Arabic, and of course then we're just going to have English. Let's space this out a little bit so they're easier to read. There we go. And then we'll have the Japanese. And lastly, Portuguese. And we'll make sure that we use the proper A in there. Although I guess if we really want to be proper, we should probably use the proper Arabic and Japanese symbols, but I'm not sure how well they would load with uh, my fonts and stuff. We can delete all the functions now, and instead, in these document.getElementById's, we're going to actually refer to our languages array. So in H1, we're going to change it to languages and then square brackets. This will also be languages square brackets. Now we need to put something inside of that square brackets. So in here, in the parameters for the function, we're going to put lang and words. So we'll put the first parameter lang in the first document dot get element by ID. So this will have lang in it. And this will have words. And these parameters are going to be passed through from down here, from the on click, just like before. But instead of being a string, we're going to pass through the positions from the array. So Arabic is in the zeroth place. The words for hello world in Arabic are in the first place. English is in the second place. Hello world is in the third. Japanese is in the fourth. Konnichiwa Sakai is in the fifth. Portuguese is in the six and the words for Portuguese is in the seventh. So now if we click and it works for all of them. So the positions, the index values of the arrays are working through there and that's a much more efficient way to do it. And then we can add on more languages if we want to without that much complexity, right? We don't need to add a whole other if statement. We can just add in two more strings into my array here. So here, maybe we add an Italian, and then comma and another string. And we can add the Italian down here to match. So Italian. And we can add in the ciao mondo. Now this is zero one two, three, four, five. So Italian is the new four, five. But that means that Japanese isn't four, five anymore, right? Japanese is now six, seven, and Portuguese is now seven, eight. So we have to update them. If we open with Google Chrome, let's make sure we did it right. English matches, Italian matches, Japanese. Good. They all look like they work. So I changed the values properly. Although I guess, I guess you don't necessarily have to do it that way, right? Like, I like the two to match their structures, right? Like, but I suppose you could just add it to the end and then just 
choose index values from the end, right? They don't have to match up. I just like them to because it, I don't know, it looks nicer to me and it seems more logical to me. But you don't have to. So if we update all these, did we get it right? 7, 8, no, that's wrong. That should be 8, 9. There we go. Save it and try it with Chrome again. Does it match? Does it work? Oh, we broke something. What happens? Let's go back and look at the code. Um, ah, in our arrays. Because I copied and pasted, I lost a comma. And I have a comma at the end now. Refresh. There we go. So, there's a more efficient way of using functions with sort of an expanded multilingual version of Hello World from before.